Welcome to the most overrated, underappreciated, most viewed, unviewed podcast of all time. Welcome to The Prince of Fresh Air. This is your host, the most charismatic man in entertainment. And I want to say thank you for a great 2021. You know, you guys have been a major support. We're reaching new countries, reaching new people. We're expanding to 15 major platforms. And I'm excited to announce that I am one of the most listened to podcasts on Spotify because of you. So thank you for all your support and hanging on and enjoying the most entertaining podcast available. Now for this episode, this is a different type of episode. So this episode was four black men, uh, me and a couple buddies, uh, talking about mental health. And it was uh, inspired by my time. Um, one of the videos I did with Jubilee, um, for a lot of you who do or do not know, I was on Jubilee a couple times, a major YouTube channel, and uh, one of the videos I did, um, Do All Black Men Think the Same, inspired a lot of people, or got a lot of outreach, and so this episode is based on that concept, and you know, in this episode we talk about mental health, uh, you know, being able to be mentally strong, and you know, our principles and things that we do in our lives, so this episode is not only for black men, it's not just for black people, it's for everybody because we're still in a pandemic. A lot of people struggling mentally, a lot of people need, you know, to hear voices. And so, you know, this one is not as controversial, but you know what? This one is for the people, it's for you guys, and it was for us as well. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. And that's right, this is the most entertaining podcast available. Enjoy this episode. So, uh, one thing I and Pete is that I guess is National Men's Health Month. So it's ironic that we're doing a podcast about mental health during uh, National uh, Men's Health Month. So I didn't know that before I get my definition on what I think mental health is, I was going to ask y'all to kind of start it off. What is mental health to you? So when you see people talk about mental health, what does mental health mean to you? You know, for me, man, you know, mental health is um, something that we overlook as a society. And for me, mental health is being in a state of balance where, you know, you're able to balance life. You know, everybody has a overwork uh, uh, work schedule and, you know, personal life and is being able to balance them out without, you know, suffering some type of mental breakdown or, you know, just being comfortable in yourself at all times. That's what I see as mental health. No, to define mental health, I look at physical health. What is physical health? It's the, um, it's like the level of health that you have in your body. So I look at mental health as kind of like, where is your mind? Is, is your mind full or are you mindful? Meaning, are you able to, are you, do you have a sound mind? Are you focused? Are you able to have clear thoughts? Um, and also that goes into uh, emotions because mind and emotions are kind of related. When you think something, it affects how you feel. So I also look at it, where's your emotional, I, I put emotional health together with mental health. Um, if you're in a depressive state or if you're in a joyful state, I look at all that as something that affects mental health. So it's kind of like, it's just um, just where you are at mentally um, in your mind and in your, I would even go as far to say in your spirit as well. Mm-hmm. Where word. Um yeah, I'd say for the most part, mental health, yo, is just, you know, try to make sure that you're straight. Try to make sure that, you're, that your mind is straight. And as long as that is good, then from there, you know, you can kind of have the wherewithal to kind of just balance that out throughout the whole body. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like the brain and the heart, those are things that really guide the body. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, mental health is just making sure you have that clarity that proper insight, that thinking, knowing yourself, who you are, and, you know, how you interact with others and the world. Right. And, you know, see, I talk, see, I talk to Percy too much because he pretty much stole my answer. Cause what I was going to say is that um, mental health is really inner balance. I think what's going on internally is what's going to actually, you know, happen externally. So, you know, if you're not balanced on the inside it's like you think of like a libra scale kind of like that and everything kind of coincides so you know your work life you know saying your physical health like kirby said um you know how you feel about yourself your relationships with people everything has to be in balance and i think once there's an imbalance then it's going to start to affect your uh, mental health so i think that's really what mental health kind of means to me so to piggyback off of that the biggest issue that i have right now is that most people don't really 
prioritize mental health. You know what I'm saying? I think mental health now, it's like you only see people really talk about it on social media. Like when you see a quote, you see a meme. Um, and people, the only people that get praised for going through something like mentally or like emotionally are celebrities. The average person doesn't get a pass for, you know, saying what they go through, you know what I'm saying? Like on the inside. So like, let's say if you were to go to work one day and, or if you didn't want to go to work one day and then, you know, your manager is like, oh, you know, why don't you want to come to work? And you're like, ah, you know, I'm kind of going through something mentally. I'm not feeling it mentally. They're going to be like, what? <laughs> Bring your ass into work. Like they're not, even, <laughs> you're not going to get a pass for that. So, um, I'm not sure if anyone else agrees with that, but that's just my um, take on mental health being a uh, mental health not being a priority in society. Yeah, I feel like it's. Um, I feel like recently, I feel like it's, it's. It's. I see more of a trend of of mental health being a thing where like when people cliche. talk about yeah, yeah, you know, when I feel like a lot of people in general when they talk about mental health, they're they're like you said you know like they're kind of talking about the celebrities way of putting mental health they're not really thinking about number one what is mental health to them or where their mental health is but mm -hmm. i do think it's not something that we we value um because i mean if you think about it i'll be honest with you even the lifestyle that is promoted through social media through through all sorts of media does not promote mental health you know going to parties all every weekend or this and that is not promoting mental health. All of these things, the way that we eat, all of that affects our mental health. So these things are not promoting mental health. So mm -hmm. I definitely feel like um, society's uh, value and understanding of mental health is definitely something that is, um, I, I want to say distorted, but I don't want to say distorted. Also, maybe maybe it's just like not, you. Yeah, exactly. There you go. That's a good word for it. So that's where I feel like it, it stands right now. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I definitely agree with what both of you said. I think, um, you know, Tyson Fury talks about all the time how, you know, you see with celebrities a lot of times. And like you said, it is true that a lot of celebrities, uh, you know, their way of mental health is different than the average worker or the average person. But at the end of the day, people forget that there's a limit to how much your body can take. And, you know, people say, oh, you got to push through it, you know, push through the pain, you know, just focus on that, you know, keep your eyes on the prize. Well, sometimes it's hard. It's not realistic sometimes when your mind is clouded, you're not focused, your, your, your brain is scattered, you're going through tragedies. What happened with, uh, what's her name, uh, Shikari Richardson? You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's another form of but mental health. Is people. she a tennis player? No, nah, no she was no, the no, track no, athlete. She's an athlete. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was just a, another prime example of people, you know, because she smoked all the weed, you know, they thought it was laughing giggles. But I mean, you know, you lose a parent before, you know, the Olympics. That's not easy work right there, you know, to like, just pick up and do it. Like, so um, like, like people jump to conclusions and shit, you know what I'm saying? But but meanwhile, they didn't even know what she was really going through, you know what I'm saying, behind behind the scenes. And I feel like that's why people don't even prioritize mental health in society because people don't take that into account. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, like I'll, I'll think back to like the last time I had like a bad day at work, you know what I'm saying? And it was because of outside things. So when I came in, I was kind of just to myself, I was kind of quiet. And this was when, you know, I was still fairly new. So I probably hadn't been there for maybe none but like a week and a half. And then I had, you know, one of the, uh, my coworkers kind of like try to like play with me, so to speak, like, you know, making jokes and shit. Meanwhile, she doesn't know how the, like, I don't remember what, what it was that was throwing me off, but basically it's like, no one even asked me how I was feeling, you know what I'm saying? Or they took me just kind of being to myself and introverted as like, Oh, you know, this nigga quiet or he, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, how people normally like praise people for being extroverted, but they don't praise you for being introverted or being to yourself. Right. And, and I mean, that's a big problem. And, you know, for me, I live a life. I, I was just talking to um, a coworker because I, I know my, my boss was trying to get me to work, you know, all week. And I said, you know, for me, first of all, the schedule is burning me out. You know, when I, when I start oversleeping, when I start putting less effort in my auditions or my, my, my stuff that I'm doing, then there's a problem. And, you know, a lot of people just say, you know, oh, you know, you just got pushed through it, get that money. But at what cost is it? You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people, we, we just live in a society where it's all about, you know, you work that nine to five, you know what I'm saying? Take care of your family, you know, do that overtime. There's more to, there's more to life than that, you know? And the, the biggest problem too, and it comes back to the work and personal life balance, is a lot of people don't have that money to be able to take that day off, to focus on themselves, they have to go to work every day or they're not going to pay that rent. Uh, so, that, you know, money, as much as people like to dis discredit it, it helps a lot of times, you know, for you to 
take care of your mental health. But a lot of people are in a position where, you know, they can take a week off and refocus and then come back to work stronger. You know, it's, so it's, it's, I feel like it's a system where, you know, it's set up for you to have to put your mental health on the back burner. Like I ain't gonna front. Like, you know, my mom says that all the time, which is like, oh, well, you know, you should just work more hours. And it's like, nah, I can't do that. Like, so since we're talking about like work and stuff like that. So me and Kirby, right. Like back in, back in uh, February or March, whenever he made a song called state of mind. And the whole, the whole song yeah. was basically about how, you know, like where the imbalance starts when you have an unhealthy like work life, you know what I'm saying? So like you have all of this energy. So you start the day at hundred percent. And then by the time, what did you say? You said my energy on 20, you'd be talking about percentage. That's the thing. Yo, that's what I'm saying. Like, so <laughs> by the time you give so much to everybody else, and by the time you come home, you don't even have enough to give to yourself. Yeah. So talk about that, Kirk. You know, I was actually going to say that I feel like this, this, um, this is also to add on to what Percy was saying too, is that a lot of times, like, I feel like we as as individuals, we don't prioritize our mental health because you have to think about it. You have to know where do I stand right now mentally? Where do I stand right now? Um, like, like, where am I at? If I'm reflecting, if I'm being reflective, where am I at right now? Um, and a lot of times, you know, like we overwork ourselves thinking, okay, I have to meet this goal. I have to do this. I have to do that. But you know, what, what's even more important is how you take care of yourself because right. you could work all all you want but th- if you can't even enjoy the fruits of your labor what's the point of the labor so you know part of what you were talking about with um that that song state of mind um when i had originally done it it was just it was it was kind of like that it was speaking about the state of mind that i was in and you know with the line specifically we were talking about it was just kind of like the idea that you know you can go to work like you said we have a limited amount of willpower and we have a limited amount of energy and we have a limited limited amount of time. So if you're spending eight hours a day working, you spend, let's say six hours a day sleeping. Now you're really left with about seven hours a day and you know you have other responsibilities. Let's, we're not even counting transportation time and all of these things. Can't so, even tend to those things. Exactly. And so the whole point of the song was, you know, I'd work from nine to five or whatever it is. And then when I get out, when it comes to doing things that really bring me pleasure, that really bring me joy, or even the things that I was pursuing, whether it's my own business, where, whatever time. it is, it's like, you just don't have the energy to do it. And I've heard a lot of people say that. I remember I had a conversation with my brother where he was saying, um, you know, he, he had um, his job where he started and he was working, he was working, he was working. And he was just like, man, and, you know, sometimes I get out of work. I just, I don't feel like being creative because I don't have the energy. Wow. And that's something that we, that's, that's a problem in, in society. And another thing that I'll add real quick too, that I mm-hmm. feel like is a major problem is uh, overstimulation of information. And what I mean is that we spend, like, I think about it. Everybody who spends, on average, most people spend about two hours a day on social media. Not two hours more than that on Instagram. Oh, yeah. it's no. Actually, it's actually more. Yes, you're right. It's actually, I had, I had read, it's actually four hours. I, I'm going to bring it down to, to even say two hours. And we're not, we're not talking about like, you're not going to spend four hours the whole, like, you know what I mean? It's, it's like throughout the day. Collectively. 50, right, exactly. Right, right. So now imagine you're doing that. All you're doing is constantly bombarding your, your mind with information. And mm-hmm. every time you get new information, what it forces you to do is to make decisions. And like I said, our willpower is limited. So when you get new information, it starts to make you think and think and think. And now you have your face with different decisions that you have to make. So now you're being depleted even through that. Everybody has an opinion nowadays. We tune in to our favorite YouTubers, our favorite Instagrammers, our favorite uh, um, um Musicians, bloggers, musicians, right? right when we right. tune into them, they're all telling us, well, here's what I think, here's what I believe. And now you just, you're taking that in, you're taking that in. And as you're going throughout your day, what that that's doing now is, is giving you so much information to where you're like, okay, well, I got to make this decision based on what I believe in that. I got to make this decision. So it's like, even that I feel like is destroying our, our mental health. And I'll be honest with you, I've been off of um, social media for over a month now. And Mm-hmm. I can tell you right now, in all my years of my life, I think my mental health is better than it's it's, it's been. And every and that, time and that's I, great, that's great news, yo. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. every that's, time that's I do great. that, it's always the same result. It's and, always the same result. And I, I'll say that, like for me, and then, and then I'll ask OC in a minute. Um, for me, I feel like, like I have to like very like you guys, you guys are into NBA or maybe like OC. So you heard about like let's say they'll like load manage certain players. Did, did he freeze? Uh oh. 
Oh, well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not the only one. Like, he actually froze. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, damn. I just need, oh, my God. You know why? Because he, cause he's, he's on his phone. Um, so somebody might have called him or some shit like that. I don't know, but uh, right. damn, should I just keep going? Or? It's, it's, yeah, it's just keep going. But it's, it's, it's going to show in the damn video. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh you so go. you still there? Yeah. What happened? Yeah, no, I'm still here. Yo, my my Wi-Fi was acting up, so I had to switch oh, it out. Oh, damn. Real quick. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, as, as soon as, yeah, soon as yeah, I went nah, to we... you in that. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> so I so what I was saying to you because I know I know you're into basketball. Like you've heard about you know them load managing like Kawhi Leonard. They load manage you know LeBron to to um you know avoid like certain injuries and things like that. I feel like I have to load manage my time at work. Like I was telling Percy, like even I, and I was telling you too the other day. I'm like even me being there four hours is too much. You know what I'm saying? Like they be there. Yeah eight hours a day, five, six days a week. I can't, I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Cause I feel like once I start to like, like I, I feel my energy is getting low, then my room starts to get messy. Then, then you'll see me with a five o'clock shadow. You know, my hair might not be on point. You know what I'm saying? I might not be eating right. I might not be missing the gym. Cause it is so real. Like last year was probably as like the worst that it got where like they would have me scheduled to be there at like eight 30 in the morning. And then like, literally I would just roll out of bed, pack my toothbrush up and then just speed down there. Like I, and then do that every day, like five days a week, and not have any energy for myself. I said, I can't do that, yo. Like, I really can't do that. I feel like one of the most detrimental things to my mental health, like in this era right now, for me, is work. It sounds crazy, but it's true. Like, just not everybody is built to be a nine to fiver, is what I like to call it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, no, nah, like, if I'm going to have to do it, let me do what's right for me. You know what I'm saying? I can't, I'm not the, 40 hours a week oh get the grind da, 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 da. because i'm sitting there and i'm serving a purpose like because this is what really drains me and this is what kirby was saying like i can't sit there and serve a purpose that has nothing to do with me i can't yeah. sit there it's like i'm giving so much to something and the only thing i'm getting back is money every week and a half bi-weekly it's like so when i go to the bathroom and i take a piss at work and i look myself in the mirror i'm like what the fuck am i doing here like why why am i really here you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that, like, that's the it, thing. Like, it, it, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let you go. It just weighs on me after a while. It's like, and they don't even realize it. Like, most people, at least people that I work with now, it's like their job is the best thing that ever happened to them. And that's great <laughs> for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like Kirby, he quit. When, how long ago was it when you quit working Apple? It was uh, February 2020. Okay. So that was last year. I bet you. How Unemployment, many people, baby. <laughs> how many people? <laughs> Did you tell like how like so what were the reactions when you quit when you quit working Apple? Well, you know what's funny is at first, um, I didn't really tell people at first. Like the word literally got around. I wasn't even telling people. But I think see? I told like the, the people who were really close to me there, um, that I was leaving, you know, and stuff. But um, I would say the reaction, you know what's funny is not only the reaction for the people who work there, but for people outside that I know, like who don't even work there with me, it was just like, oh, okay, well. What are you crazy? What are you gonna like, do next? Like, yeah, well, like you, oh, like, uh, is it, I, I remember I had one, somebody told me like, oh, okay, well, like, how are you gonna get paid? <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's not the first thing that comes to my mind. I mean, like I had like all sorts of different reactions. Of course I had positive reactions. There are people who were like, well, you know, you know, once I told them, here's what I'm doing it for, they were just really happy and supportive and telling me, you know, do what you're doing, you know, support, believe and stuff. But there were also people who were, it, it was like mind boggling to them where it was like, wait, what do you mean? You're leaving. So like, are you going to go to another store or are you go? That, that was, that's something too. I guess like, are you going to another store? But right. You know, that's, that's, that is a reaction to ask you. I, I just think, because the point that I was making by asking you that was just the fact that most people, you making a decision like that for yourself, are going to look at you like you're crazy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because that's not something that they would have the courage to do. And then I know also you wanted to say something. No, I was just, just going to say, you know, um, the thing is, it's about like what works for you. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're doing something where it's like you feel like you're just staying in somebody else's like pockets, agenda, dream, vision, whatever. It's not gonna work for you. So you gonna last long. Yeah, it's not gonna last long. Like you're gonna be forcing yourself, yo, in that nine to five, yo, sitting there just like, like, yo, I'm just here just for the check. You know what I'm saying? And that joint just affects your mental. Mm -hmm. Know what I mean? Like affects your mental. It can be very frustrating, very annoying. Like, um, like I remember like um like Curb, when you said that, you know, you left Apple, yo, 
like I wasn't surprised, yo. And at like I wasn't one of the people just like, oh yo, like, oh, so what are you gonna do next? You gonna go to another Apple job? Because like I know you for like some time now, know what I mean, and I know what your skills are, I know what you love to do. Right. Like Apple's not getting you that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, right. know what I mean, yeah. so it's like and don't get me wrong, it was it was there was times, you know, that I, I really loved working there. So part of it wasn't even that. But like you said, it's like what works for you. So that's why. Oh, see, what are definitions you had mentioned when you said mental health is knowing yourself, really understanding how you are, what works for you and what doesn't work for you will help you along in that journey, too, because there are some people who um, work better by themselves. There are some people who are better in teams. There are some people who like guidance. There are some people who like to guide or, 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 or to um, create a direction for themselves. So it really does matter on um, who see, you are. see, but to piggyback off of that, I feel like people lump everybody in the same category. And then that's why I get that's why I get pissed off because there are some people that couldn't even really interpret and like perceive what you just said. How you have different types of people that work better, you know what I'm saying? Like have different types of work styles and work ethics. Because me, I'm the type of guy I work better by myself. Like mm-hmm. if if I'm gonna be like, because I don't like to be micromanaged, especially if it's some like simple shit. Like don't micromanage me. Like if we're doing something complex, then yeah, I might need some supervision. But if I'm just like you know watching dogs, like I was doing during during the summertime, or if I'm just doing some transactions, like don't fucking breathe down my neck because it's just not it's just not good for me. Like I'll even say, like, I just remember like I quit my job. <laughs> I quit my job in in right after we did that shit. Cause so Kirby had that song. We did a remix and I'm sitting there listening to that song, driving that shit all the time. And I was like, yo, I'm fucking quit, bro. Like that was part of it though. That was part of that shit. Yo, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I said, Clyde can get in line. Y'all can keep the nine to fives. Like, I was like, yo, like y'all can keep that shit. And I look and I had to do that shit for my mental health because I couldn't. I just couldn't go on doing that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not sustainable. I'm like giving you guys energy that I know I have to keep for myself, that I know I don't have, you know, enough left, you know what I'm saying, to to, to nourish myself. So I, I literally had to tear down that foundation. Like you said, like, yeah, there are going to be those like, damn, y'all just quit. All right, cool. So I got to get on it. But like, I don't, re- I don't regret quitting my job at all. Yeah. because like look at where i am now because like if you talk to me right now and you talk to me back then it'd be two completely different people you know what i'm saying right. like kirby helped me um record which i'll talk about a little bit more later but he helped me make a video called resolve on my channel and it was literally about that like i was like i don't know like being there so much made me question my existence because i didn't have anybody around that was like really like i don't want to say like reassuring me but like i just didn't have purpose or resolves so i was like what's my resolve to live like being there <laughs> Like just being there from from 10, 10 30 to 5 30 at night and then like going to the gym and then by the time I get back from the gym, it's already after 10. It's the only time I the only what the only thing I could do left is just brush my teeth, you know, saying eat one more time and then go to sleep to wake up to do it again. I'm like, yo, what am I what am I really doing? You know right. what I'm saying? So um yeah. Yeah, it's I, 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 I definitely agree. I'm gonna just piggyback on that. It's I, I had the I have these conversations a lot with different people, and it's like at the end of the day, you have to find out what works for you, like y'all all said. And it goes back to the way our society is ingrained. It's ingrained for you to wake up nine to five. You know, most people don't go to the gym. So most people do nine to five, maybe got kids to take care of, sleep and repeat. And they just do that five, six days a week. And so, you know, the the culture of now, the influencers, the, the creators, you know, being able to content create. That's still a new foreign concept for people. So, you know, a lot of employees, they're looking at like, wait, you're an actor, you do music, you do photography. What is this? You know, you work for me. You know, your time is for me. And I tell this to every employee before I get hired. This is just a job. I'm a clock in. And when I clock out, I don't want to hear nothing about this job. I don't want you to ask me to come in. Nah, that's it. That's all I'm doing four days a week. And a lot of employees, they don't understand that concept. They think, oh, if I need you, you got to come in. It's like, no. Because I have other priorities to do and I have to focus on myself as well. My yeah. my my existence isn't to make your bottom line bigger. My existence is to, you know, sustain my living situation, but also fulfill my purpose. And that's the problem. We live in a society now where your only purpose is to fill, fulfill the obligations of the employer and then whatever else. little time you have left. You know, people talk about this all the time. Why is it that we work five, six days a week, only get one day, two days a week off? But during those two days, you got to do grocery shopping. You got to take care of your kids. You got errands to run. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at it, you only really get maybe a day 
12 hours to yourself. What are you going to do in 12 hours? You can't fly to Cancun in that. So, facts, um, facts. you know, here, here's, here's something I wanted to, um, I, I wrote it down quickly so I didn't forget it, but mm -hmm. um, Dimitri, you have mentioned about how, like, when your mental health is not on point, like your room gets messy and, mm -hmm. and you know, you, you might not be taking care of yourself. That's something that I realized. I always, I realize this. When I, sometimes I wake up and I look around my room, I'm like, yo, nah, my room's a mess. You know what that means? There's something going on up here. Yeah, you know, yep. It kind of gives me a, a hint, like I need to, 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 to slow it down and just, you know, do mm -hmm. a little bit of check. So, yeah. um, you know, there, 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 there's like certain signs that I feel like you can see when your mental health is not up to par. So, you right. know, I ask that question, it's like, what, what do you guys see? Um, in your personal lives, that could kind of give you a hint. Like, how do you know when your mental health is not up to par with how uh, it should be or how you so like it? So, I'll, I'll, I'll probably... Wait, oh, so you want to go? No, go ahead, bro. Uh, no, nah, because I was, I was going to, you know, cause I literally kind of, like, experienced this probably, like, uh, like a week or so ago. No, I mean, like, DJ, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, certain things, y'all just peep, like, when I'm just on edge, like, just on edge for every little thing, oh, yo, know, like... <laughs> <laughs> no, you mean like yeah, anxious like you feel anxious about them uh, this nigga be angry yeah <laughs> <laughs> where we're like, yo it's funny because like now I'm starting to pick up moments where I can actually be anxious but I don't really get like anxious like that like I don't have like um, um I don't have like you know much anxiety like that mm -hmm. but um I'm picking up where, like, in certain pockets it might be there. But for the most part, like, I'll, like, get, like, irritated or, like, I'll feel, like, more tired, mm, sleepy, okay. drained. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and I'll pick up on those things. You know what I mean? So it's like, yo, some things where it's just be like, yo, one day it's like, yo, oh, it's, it's a little mishap. It's a bad day, whatever. Like, it is what it is. You move on. Um, those days, yo, like, something like that happens, yo, like, I'm ready to just, like, flip my lid. You know what I mean? And those are, like, times where I'm, like, I right, like, I'm not on point, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not Gucci. Like, yo, to be honest with you, um, there was this one time, y'all was driving around, yo, and just like, you know what I mean? Like, just something threw me off, yo. And like, um, I just had like other stuff going on too. Yo, like, I felt like I was about to drive off the side of the road and just risk it all, yo, just like, <laughs> money, like yo, <laughs> risk yo. it all. <laughs> but it's funny, yo, the thing is, yo, it's, it's funny, funny, it's funny it's that, funny. it's funny, like, not saying you guys are wrong, because it's the way he said it that was funny, but like, when this nigga told me that, because we had a conversation, and then I was worried, I was like, I don't know what this nigga means by that shit, but I was like, nah. Yeah, because you know, I don't, I don't get like that too often. Yeah, you know? like, I don't get like that too We often. need you, James Harden, don't do it. <laughs> the Nets need him, though. The Nets need him. So let me let me ask you this, me, OC. Me. So when when you when you get like that, when things like that happen in your life, and you start to see the signs, like what do you do? How do you deal with that? How do you cope with that? Uh, for me, I great like question. to I like to see. Yeah, that was a great question, hundred percent. Um, but I like to see things in motion. You know what I'm saying? I'm just mm -hmm. like, yo, let me see how I can sit back and recalibrate. You know what I mean? Mm. Let me uh, see how I can find ways to, to take the energy that I need. You know, the little energy that I have for myself right now at the moment, how can I create more of that? How can I keep more of that for myself? Just just for now, just for now, you know what I mean? Because I need that. So it's like, yo, just I just need to find ways to recalibrate. It's like, and right. sometimes there's going to be certain things that are out of my control. You know what I'm saying? That I can't like, I can't fix. So I can't, you know, be like, yo, I got to be on top of this right now. But for the most part, it's like, yo, what are the little things? I know for me, um, a big part of like my mental health is working out. Like if I don't work out for a period of time, yo, like I become self-conscious physically, you know, most I mean? definitely Stuff like that. Um, and it'd be hard for me to go back into it. Cause I'm like, yo, I remember what I used to do before. Facts. Now, yeah, like, real shit. Gym, you know what I'm saying? Like, Get them old pics. <laughs> yeah. Where well, you be seeing the old pics? You'd be like, yo, I used to be, you know what I'm saying? But like. <laughs> You know, doing it like it's uh, it becomes a part of my routine. It actually gives me some type of schedule in and stuff, be a little more organized. Um, so that's something that definitely helps me. I was kind of out of the gym for a minute, and I'm like, yo, I got to get back into it. You know what I'm saying? So I got back Man. into it. Um, and just other things, yo, working like, yo, what do I like to do? What are my hobbies? How can I incorporate more of those into my day? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of just being honest with people in terms of just what I might be going through, having a uh, conversation. And uh, I'm a spiritual guy too, you know what I mean? Like, um, like you know, I'm a Christian by faith. 
So yeah. for me, like going back to God is just something that helps me personally because it's just like there's just words or certain certain things I can read that I'm like, I right, like, like, dang, how did I forget this? Why did I? Because you know, like, yo, we're human, yo, we make mistakes. It be like that, you know what I'm saying? But right. like certain, certain things like that just lets me know, like, yo, it's it's gonna be alright, you know what I'm saying? And, I, w- I will it. say, so I'll I'll go next. So for me, and it's something that like Percy would say, like I would always do it, but I remember like when, like maybe this time last year when we were talking stuff, um, he would say things like, yo, like you might just have to like take a walk in nature. You know what I'm saying? Like I always find that anytime I'm always in a space where like mad shit is going on, I I always find that going for a walk, like really kind of just like mellows me out. I'm talking about like just getting in the trees, you know, going in nature, just breathing and just walking, you know, maybe throwing off some tunes. It's, it's a, it's a time where I don't have to think about, it's one of two spaces where I don't have to think about anything if I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Um, OC, see, I was going to kind of save this for later, but I guess I'll say this now. So like four years ago, which is crazy how time passes, but four years ago, I was going through probably like, I was on like the last leg of like, like the worst time period of my life, like mentally. And I remember seeing OC and then I remember OC asked me, he was like, like, you see me at, at school and you were like, like, you OK, bro, some shit. And then I was like, nah. And then I remember we linked up probably not long after that. And then I remember telling him basically everything that was, you know, going. I remember I just told I told him everything. Like I just told him, like, yo, like, I don't even want to be here no more. Like type shit. Like, that's just how real it was. And I had been in the gym before. You know, but it's like when I was in the gym prior to that, it was like for what it could do for me aesthetically. Like I just wanted to look a certain way. I wanted to be a certain way type shit. But when I started going, because he was already going to the gym. And so we just kind of like clicked up like after that. So like he kind of like fake, like took me under his wing. So we started going to Planet Fitness together, like practically like every day, yo. And that was the start of when the gym became like a safe space, like a space where like, I don't have to think about anything. Like it rebalances me out. It keeps me focused. You know what I'm saying? So it's cool that you said that because I, I'll give you your props. Like that was like, it set the foundation for what I do in the gym right now. Like, now that's just, to be. yeah, like that's just, you know what I'm saying? What I do. So now, yeah, like you want to go to the gym to look better, obviously, but you also go to, I also go to the gym <laughs> primarily for what it does for me mentally. Because it helps me like tackle, you know, saying the week more. Like even Kirby, like we, <laughs> the three of us used to be in the gym like every day. I think that wasn't like not long. Yeah. Was it? No, it wasn't that same year. It was like a couple of years before, but it was the three of us like just going no, to the it was, gym. And it shit. was definitely, I think it was that year. I think it was that yeah. same year. I and, that, and, yeah. And it when gives it like your day structure, you know what I'm saying? It gives your day like a routine. So it's some shit to look for. Cause I used to look forward to like coming to the gym, you know, with these two. Like, like we used to literally be in the gym, wasting time, like laughing. I don't even know what the fuck we was laughing about. Like literally in Planet Fitness, acting the fool and shit. Talking about curb appeal and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I forgot about that. What? <laughs> Yo, that was that funny, son. <laughs> Yo, son, I'm telling you, yeah. bro. <laughs> but you know, you know, like you were saying with the whole gym thing. Like this, this is this is what I found recently. I started going to the gym again. Like, so now, now I've been going for like a month and a half consistently. And, you know, after a while of not going mm-hmm. and now like the way it's so ingrained in me, I don't, I don't feel like I'm going to fall off of that. Like it, it feels like I've accepted a way of life that's like knitted into my life. But right. here's what I find. The reason why I really love going to the gym and making it a part of my day, because like you said, is <clears throat> it's like, you're not just training your body. I look at it like I'm training my mind, if anything. Max, yo. You know what I mean? Because because there's times you're doing certain things and it's not your body you have to push. You have to push mentally to tell yourself, no, my true. body is telling me I'm tired and I've hit my limit, but no, I can keep right. going more. So I look at it like this is where I go to become more disciplined. So that that that's why, to me, I really love it. And it's like such a essential part of my life because it's it's not just like i look at it like a battlefield for disciplining my body Real my shit. mind and i would say even my spirit because when you're disciplined enough to wake up every day and go to the gym you're gonna have the discipline to if you're doing that you're gonna have the discipline to wake up every day and do something else and, and, and yep. do this and that you know what I'm saying? especially so, if you stay consistent with it because I, I i've been saying this for a little while now like how you do one thing is how you do all things you know what i'm saying yeah so it's like if you're flaky with like some shit like we're going to the gym 
you're going to be flaky with other things too. Like, that's just, that's just how it is. You know what I'm saying? And it's also like accountability. It's like, yo, it's like, all right, you set a goal for yourself. Like, yo, I'm trying to be this strong by this day. I want to be this way by this day. If you can do that, you can do anything. Facts. No, it's definitely facts. And, and, facts. and you know, it's crazy. I was, uh, I was just uh, watching the Will Smith. Um, that's saving that, my life. Yeah. And like, uh, yeah, I knew he was going to fanboy. I knew, shit, I knew, <laughs> fan boy. I knew it. That shit. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Nah, anyway, go ahead, bro. <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, he I was talking to, he, he, he was talking about it too, where it's like, you know, that consistency, uh, consistency and growing up in a military family and then losing some of that discipline during the pandemic. And which is why I say I'm glad the pandemic helped because for me, before the pandemic, it was just work. You know, if I had an audition or two, I'd do it. You know, sometimes half ass it because I was tired from work. And then I'd just do the same thing next next day. And I would just do that for months. And, like, then the pandemic hit and I realized, I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Like, I'm just wasting my life. I'm miserable. I'm tired. I'm not doing what I want to do. And then, you know, it was fine. How many enough, times you know, I call this guy? I, I'd be probably like, yo, Percy, what up, man? And he'd be like, oh, fucking tired, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll still yo, be tired. Uh, yo, literally, <laughs> that's exactly dude, like I'm fucking tired, man. Uh, that New York, man. You, you, but now I still be tired. But you know what? The difference is I'm a good tired now. And like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I'm overworked or whatever. But for the most part, it's the little things like OC said. It's the little things that you do during the day, you know, doing something that you enjoy. And, you know, I always talk about taking a walk in the park. And people might think, you know, it's cliche, or whatever, but it's true. Yeah. If you ever realize, you know, humans are connected to earth in general. So sometimes leaving your room, leaving your apartment, going for a walk, putting on some music or a podcast or something, and just walking for five minutes, you'd be surprised on how much your mind clears up when you're not thinking about, right. oh, damn, I got to finish this assignment tomorrow. Or I got to go to work at six in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just taking that time to focus, reevaluate. And you'd be surprised on 5, 10, 15, 30 minutes, what that can do for your mental health. And a lot of people, they get stuck in the routine and it's hard to break that cycle. So, right. you know, sometimes you need to break that cycle and create a new one to help you in your mental health journey. Because ultimately, like you said, everybody's different. Some people love, you know, going to work, you know, a certain time, doing things at a certain time. You know, for a lot of us, we're content creators. We don't have that set schedule for the most part. It's always flipping, flopping. Yeah. You know, we got something this day. Tomorrow we might be free, but the next day is booked up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need that break, whether it's five minutes, a week, a day, to just take a moment for yourself, not think about work, school, personal life, and just, you know, refocus everything and that's why i love the will smith thing because he talked about how he was real he had to refocus you know what i'm saying you eating pizza and cheeseburgers and you, you you're having a good time and then one point it hits you like yeah, what am i up. doing you know so yeah. so um so i guess to um really make note of what you just said about like what he was eating and how that affected him uh, the last time me and Kirby linked up, we were talking about, I think we, we literally sat there in the car and we were talking about diet and like nutrition, like literally like the whole ride, <laughs> like, like either to or from or whatever. And I, I find I that was fasting for, at that time. So that's yeah. Oh, okay. Time. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I find that um, for me, um, you know, nutrition and the way that you eat really, or the way that I've been eating, like just, you know, all right. So long story short, to give some context, I stopped eating meat primarily in the end of June, like June 25th. That was June 25th. I stopped eating chicken. I threw all that shit out. Then I got into fasting. I don't eat breakfast anymore. You know what I'm saying? And when I go to the gym, I go to the gym, like, you know, fasted and everything like that. And the amount of like how I can't stress enough how much it's benefited me because I just feel completely different. I feel more light, you know, just like, just, you know, I, I, I don't want to say I feel like a different person, but I kind of feel like that. Like, I'm not even going to lie. Like, just my energy levels is different. You know, OC, when we worked out together, you see me like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was just, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo. Yo, so, the latest man with the jump rope, yo. <laughs> Only be doing crazy skips, yo, all over the gym with the jump rope, yo. Right, like, so. looking like he, he's doing his own double dutching, yo. And then doing Bobby <laughs> Brown moves and all that. I'm like, yo, fam. Like, and mind yeah. you, I'm sitting there struggling. <laughs> nah, we'll, we got to compete. Keep, we got to compete, Dimitri. But yeah. Nah, nah, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get you there, yo. So um, I definitely want to start with Kirby. Because the last time I talked to Kirby on the phone, he had just finished a three-day fast. So 
elaborate for the folks at home, bro. Yeah, I feel like everyone should really try fasting. You don't have to do a three-day fast. There's different ways to fast, and there's different reasons to fast. But I'll give you some. The reason why I was fasting at that time was really more so um, a spiritual fast. It was to get to, um, like Osi said, like me, I'm a man of faith. So it was to connect with God and get closer to God. And one of the ways, that one of the best ways to do it, and, and not only that, the thing I found about fasting, I feel like I could write a book on fasting. I just did it like two times, you know. <laughs> but but that, yeah. it's just I observe like what happens when I fast. I'll tell you this: the first time that I did it, um, the first that I'm, I, I did it three times. The first time that I did it for for, for real, for real. On the second day, I fell into temptation. <laughs> mm. I ate some crackers. <laughs> I was like, oh man. <laughs> You broke it, man. I I broke my fast for some crackers, bro. Like not even, (laughs) not even a cheeseburger. Come on, man. (laughs) Some crackers. Like you know, I was feeling bad and all that stuff. But it really, I really learned a lot from that. You know what I mean? What it showed me was, it, it, it showed me how, as human beings, that you know, we're. We're going to have. We're going to come into those times where we're led, where we, we fall into temptation, or basically we fall back. We fail, right? But we have a chance to be uh, okay. So there's two things I could have done. I could have just said, okay, I broke my fast. All right, it's over. So the next day I'm gonna just eat, or the next thing I could have realized, okay, cool, I made a mistake, right? Move forward. And I, exactly, move forward from that, and and I just continued the fast. But the most recent one that I did. Um, I did that one successfully. I ate absolutely nothing. All I had was water for um, three days. Um, it's just just water. And, and during that time, I was, you know, um, I was praying. I was taking walks in nature. I was, um, I, like, it really did affect me. But I'll say this. We, since we're talking about the, the topic of mental health, I'll tell you how it affected me mentally. Uh, the first day, it wasn't bad at all. The first day, you know, I, I remember when I felt the hunger. But, you know, it's funny. When you when you know you're fasting, when you know I'm not going to eat for three days, when you feel hunger that first time, it's nothing. But think about sometimes during the day, the second you feel, oh, no, I got to get, what was it? Yeah, Open the pantry. Yeah, 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 now, yeah. I'm hungry. I got to eat. But when, I, when I'm doing it and I, I'm doing it intentionally, what happens is that, okay, the second I feel that, I know it's nothing. This is just like the gym for me. It was like working out. I know this is nothing. The second day... I did feel, um, I didn't really feel hungry, but I felt a little, I remember there was a time where I felt a little lightheaded. Mm-hmm. I got through it. The mm-hmm. real challenge came on the third day. That was the day, that was the battle for me. And um, on the third day, I remember that day I woke up and I was supposed to, there were so many things I was supposed to do. The day before, mind you, I was really active. I, I was, um, I was here in the studio that day. Um, I was shooting all day. Um, so I was just very physically active. So it didn't, you know, take an effect on me. But the third day, I remember I was hungry. My body felt physically weak. There were so many things that I had to do. And there were times where I said, I have to lay down. But you know what? I really enjoyed that experience. The reason I enjoyed that experience because it was just like being in a gym. I realized that what my body is telling me and even what my mind is telling me right now is not it for me. Because remember part of it I told you was part of my goals that was um, to strengthen my faith and get closer to God. So of course I was I was um, reading the Bible, I was praying and guess what? It was faith that led me through it because I really, I remember I got to a point where I was, it was close to, to I, I was ending my fast at 8 p.m. So I was close to it, like about four hours in. And I was just, oh, it, I was feeling weak so weak that I had to lay down. I was spending time just laying down. My head was now, I was feeling lightheaded and I was just feeling weak. But, you know, after I did all that, that I had to do, I prayed and I, I, I just, um, I, I, I meditated on it. And something amazing happened. After all that time, when I got closer, it's now it's two hours within, I felt stronger than ever. It was just like in a gym when you might think you've hit your limit. I don't know if I could push enough. And you go and you push one more. And then you push one more on top of that. And you realize I have so much more left mm-hmm. in me. So for me, those three days, it was a day after that. The next day I woke up after my fast, I had clarity of mind. My mind, it was right. just 
quiet. I didn't have thoughts bouncing all over the place. I wasn't bombarding my thoughts. You know, of course, during that day, yeah. I'm also fasting from social media. I mean, I've, I've been fasting for social media for months now. But, you know, because I'm not, I don't have all these things coming Outside, in. external. Outside, external. See, because yeah. see, this is something that I said to OC literally the other day. And it's something that I found out for myself. And it's something that I'm implementing so that way I can live by it. And it's the fact that the mind is not capable of making decisions, okay? Because throughout your life, your mind has been exposed to so many external influences that has been the subject of conditioning for a long time. So is your mind really you or is it what you've been conditioned to think? Your mind can only ponder certain decisions. What I'm going, where I'm going with this is the fact that, see, you thought you were hungry because your mind told you you were hungry, but what was on the other side of that? You see what I'm saying? It was a completely different side to that. That's just one thing that I just wanted to, to mention because it blew my mind when I thought about it. Because it's like, I personally, for me, I don't know about other people, but for me, I have to go with like my intuition, like my gut feeling. I can't go with my mind because if I go with my gut feeling, it's only going to tell me once, but my mind is going to tell me 10,000 different things. Right. You see what I'm saying? So I, I find that, and it might help other people that like you can't listen to your mind because right, when you're in the gym and you're lifting weights, your mind is going to tell you, ah, right, you know what? Now nah, I'm going to just, because that happens to me too. Like shit, I might be, you know, saying doing like like a like I don't know, like bench press or some shit, and I'm at three reps. I'm supposed to do six. I'm at five. I'm like, you know what? I might just be good at that. No, nah, my mind told me to stop at five, but I know I can actually go on. And my body's telling me I can continue going, but my mind is telling me otherwise. So that's just something I just wanted to throw out there. Yeah, that, that'd be yeah. a little dangerous, yo, especially when you bench pressing by yourself. Yo, you try to go for that extra. <laughs> yeah, yo, son, <laughs> that's that's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, then, and at my gym, at my gym, nobody will help Somebody you. help nobody him. Will help you. That happened to somebody. They're going to look at you like, look nobody at this man. He you. thought he got that. Yo, nobody helped this man. That shit happened like last year. I remember that like it was yesterday. Nigga, whole shit went like that. I turned around. Everybody just looked at this man. Nobody helped him. Dude was like. It was like this. I was saying? like, yo. That, that, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Y'all like, see that? Wow. <laughs> this man is like, real <laughs> star. Yeah, I'll I, I be like, sir, you know, I need you to spot me, please, because I don't want to be that guy. Because I'm like one of like. Nah, don't be that guy, guy bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Don't be that guy, man. Yeah, so. But, you know, um, on the terms of fasting, I, I don't do three days. I, I fast every day, usually 20 to 24 hours, right? And when I first started, it's because my diet was crap. I was eating a lot of potato chips, you know, candy, whatever I could get my hands on. And I, I realized when I was doing it after doing it for a while, I felt I had more energy. I had more time in my day because mm -hmm. when you think about um, our schedules, right, we usually operate according to how we eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, you know, Excellent. and then once you break that cycle, you realize you free up a lot more time instead of spending, you know, three hours wondering about what you're going to do for lunch. You're thinking about, you know, what can I get done, you know, tonight or tomorrow, Facts. you know what I'm saying? Totally different. And like, there's a lot of benefits. I'm not here to preach to the choir. If you want to try it, you know, try it. If you don't, you don't. Because, you know, if you're an iron worker, I don't know if fasting 24 hours going, you know, is, is, is safe for you. But I think there's certain things you can do to change that. And fasting has been helpful for me because now I have more energy to do things. My body's accustomed to it. So now I'm not thinking about what I'm going to eat at noon. I'm thinking about, all right, oh, what can, can I do this podcast idea? Or, you know, mm -hmm. let me call my family or, you know, let me take care of these errands. And the so the process it, is, is different now. Right. You know, and like you said, Dimitri, a lot of people forget that what you put in your body does play a part on your mind. Because think about it. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever had a night, uh, a nice Saturday? You eating pizza, drinking beer, you know, have that cheeseburger in your hand. and It feels good. And then you wake up in the morning, your brain all scrambled, you feel sloppy, you feel just out of shape, you feel you just feel terrible. You know what I'm saying? So you also have to take and consider, you know, is that pack of Oreo cookies, you know, worth really it. worth it? You yeah, know, and yeah. I'm not here to say you can't enjoy it because I have brownies every night when I after I eat dinner. But it's a balance to everything. And I think that's really just what it comes down to. You have to balance your life and, you know, you can't let one thing overtake you know, the rest of your life. And I think that's a big problem with our society is that a lot of times it's work that overtakes, you know, life. And, you know, you just got to be able to balance the things that make you happy. So. Yeah, no, nah, that's, that's a fact. I mean, to piggyback off of what he said real quick, 
Because he used to tell me that he was like that he fasts and stuff. And I remember I was like, oh, I'm too skinny for all of that. I was like, what? Fasting? Hell no. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would never do that. I would probably lose 30 pounds and shit like that. Then mind you, fast forward a year later, it's like my mind and my body does not revolve around food. <laughs> because right. because it was a calculated decision for me to stop eating meat and to change my diet and to incorporate, you know, um, an extended amount of fasting. Because that's why they call it breakfast, because you're breaking the fast. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Right. People think they're slick and then they call it the most important meal of the day when, in fact, the most important thing that your body is doing is actually giving you fuel. You know what I'm saying? It's processing what you ate yesterday and then giving you energy for the day. But instead of you allowing your body to do that, you put some more food in there and then you effectively right. stop everything that it was starting to do. Because a lot of times when you feel like hungry or like you feel kind of off, you get a headache, that's because your body's doing something other than digesting food. <laughs> and one right. of the books that I read, it said that, you know, life is a tragedy of nutrition. Like, and that's a fact because you look at a lot of people's ailments and stuff, it really boils down to what they've been putting in their system their entire life. The only right. reason why type two diabetes exists is because in Western society, foods is just like chicken, 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 meat, 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 this, that, and the third. And in reality, it's just like, yo, like you have to live with what you put in your system you know, saying uh, uh, 20 years, 30 years. And then by the time you reach your 50s or whatever, your body's not strong enough to be able to counteract all that stuff. And then a lot of time, most people anyway, they're like, I mean, me personally, if I went to like the Haitian buffet or if I went to go to like the diner and shit and eat, I feel lethargic after I eat all that stuff. I, you get the itis and shit like that. But when I eat what I eat right now, I don't feel like that. I eat and then I can still go. I don't eat. And it doesn't feel like debilitating. Like eating food should not, you know, reduce your energy. It should give you energy. But most people, they don't think that. No, for right. sure, yo. Like, it's crazy because um, I've kind of been experiencing that too. Like, I've been doing uh, more like intermittent fasting because like I work out in the morning. And then another thing that like I realized, um, you know how they'd be like, oh, you have to eat like right after you get out the gym. Like, yo, that, that 30 minute, that hour window. Like you gotta eat this. Yeah, like, we used to go crazy over that. We used to go crazy yeah, over yo, that. We used to go crazy. Like, like, yo, like, yo, we, like, yo, I gotta go home. I gotta eat, bro. Yeah, yo, we were literally like, in the car, like, 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 that protein <laughs> shake. <laughs> yo, word, big old protein shake, yo. Like, yo, that joint messed me up, bro. Like, for real. Like, yo, I got mad huge fast, yo. But it's like, I wasn't, I was like, it was just off a show. Like, I wasn't really strong like that, or like as strong as I, I thought I should have been. Um, but then again, it's like you can only really do so much. Like at, when we was at Planet Fitness at the time, you can only really do so much, you know. Facts, what I'm saying? Facts, facts, facts. <laughs> but you know, I wasn't as strong as I knew I should have been. I felt mad sluggish, you know what I'm saying? Because like I'm trying to reach a weight and reach a certain stuff that's just not meant for my for aesthetics. For yeah, aesthetics. For my... No, not even for aesthetics. It's like, well, like, yeah, you know what I mean, at the same time, I wanted to get stronger. So me knowing that. I wasn't getting stronger. I just looked big. I was like, yo, I wasn't feeling that. You know what I'm saying? And the actual weight that I was putting on, I'm like, yo, naturally, genetically wise, mm -hmm. this ain't, this way ain't meant for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. this ain't meant for me. Um, So, but like, but I kept on having it in, that my, in my head where it's like, yo, I got to eat something right now. I got to get the protein shake. I got to do the extra caloric intake. Yo, you don't need all that. You know what I mean? You like. Don't. And even with like an extra caloric intake, you don't have to go so crazy with it. You know what I'm saying? Like bodies, you're, like, you're overloading your body. I did that. Like gargling, yeah. fucking protein shakes, eating mad food. Like, oh, I got to have 4,500 calories a day. And in reality, you're doing your body a disservice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because like, because I used to think, you know, and then we'll switch topics because this is like mad, like athletics and shit. But because uh, <laughs> I, I used to think, oh, you know, I could be 200 something fucking pound i thought like you know what i'm saying that that was some shit that i can do and this was like 2016 so then i was doing things according to what i thought that i could achieve and in reality like none of that is actually good for your body especially like now it's like yeah, i talked man. to a doctor and he was like yo like he was like i'd rather you eat three big macs <laughs> instead of motherfucking uh, a protein shake and shit that says it's got like what was it that i was drinking serious mass and it's like oh, this yeah. It's like this protein shake that I don't even know how many fucking calories it's supposed to have in one serving, but what? Like, that's just mad unhealthy. So, and, and put it like this, and, not, and mind you, that preceded the worst mental space that I've ever been in in my life. Like, ironically enough, because I did that from like May, like really like May and then early June. And then that's when like shit just kind of got out of whack. And then from 
pretty much that point, June until February, March, the next year was just like really like the worst months of my life. Yeah, yo, and it's like, yo, ironically enough, yeah. It's like some some people they can do that, you know what I'm saying? Like, and like 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 we said before, yo, like you got you gotta do what works for you, what makes sense for you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you know, like I know a few people, yo, like a few of my friends, they'd be like a little shorter than me, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm only I'm only five nine, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm not I'm not I'm not tall. <laughs> but like with my size, you know, me going to like 200 pounds, just because genetically wise, like, like, you know, it's going to be tough for me. Like, I'm not going to move around the way I want to and stuff like that. Like I do other things outside of lifting weights. You know what I mean? Like I like to play ball a lot and stuff like that. I like to run. I'm not trying to, you it's know, not conducive. Like, I'm, not, I'm not a running back. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to do all that. I'm not a linebacker. Um, I have friends that be like my height or a little shorter than me that can carry all that weight. And move around like no beef. You know what I mean? It's genetics, like, you know, yeah, like just everybody's yeah, body just, different. Just, just genetics, you know what I'm saying? So they can do that. They can eat all the meals. They can do all that stuff and, and you know, be chilling. Um, so you just got to pay attention to what works for you. You know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. you know, don't believe the hype where it's like you got to you gotta eat all these meals. You got to eat like six meals a day and all this stuff. Like, yo, you don't need all yo, that. Yo, who was that guy? Day, who was that guy from like years ago, that little inside joke that we had? This nigga was like, He's like, y'all pulled up to a fucking restaurant or some shit. This nigga was like, yo, I'm on my 10th meal, yo. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, homie was, yo, I remember that. Yo, homie was like 18 years old, looking like he was 35. So. <laughs> yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but <laughs> to switch topics a little bit, um, I think, I think, I don't know if this was the Jubilee episode that you did, but I think, did they ask about therapy in the Jubilee episode? Yeah, like it was like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I guess explain on that before I start to expound the shit. Yeah. So, um, you know, go check that out. It's called, well, they changed the title. It was called Do All Black Men Think the Same? But um, it was basically just a panel of six black men. Um, and one of the questions we talked about was therapy and um, basically how it's a stigma in the black community. And as black men, you know, this is and this ties to mental health that there's this thing where you just push forward, you know, you man it out, you tough it out, you know what I'm saying? Uh, be a man, stuff like that. And we were just talking about therapy and, you know, do we see therapists or what do we do, you know, to, to help with our mental uh, state, mental health and stuff like that. So yeah. um, it was a, it was a good conversation. You know why? And if it was important for me, because it is a very, um, overlooked thing in our community and i talked about i shared my story in a video so go check that out if you want to jubilee but, jubilee yeah like millions of fucking views like big like huge youtube channel and he's been on like three episodes so far five um, get it right boy no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> so um but i was gonna ask you guys because we're all we're all black and i have my like run-ins not too many so i couldn't really say but have you guys ever dealt with you know like someone saying like oh uh you know therapy you shouldn't go to therapy you know what i'm saying or like have you had any like experiences with the stigma of therapy at all oh most definitely um and i, I talked about it in the video a lot um when i was a kid when i when i was in foster care one of the things that the uh, foster agency did was they gave me and my my brothers that was with me uh um a therapist and we used to go to, you know, walk through Central Park, eat pizza, and he just asked us questions and, you know, talk about our family and stuff like that. And I look back at those memories because it really kind of went through and, you know, really try to find myself a little bit. If it would have lasted longer, I think my journey would have been a little better. But I think in terms of that moment at the age I was, it did, it definitely helped me. Um, nowadays, I'm not really big into therapy i know there's a, a a big thing in the black community especially in the hood you don't see therapists you know they they just people you pay who really don't care about you know what you really say then you know they just collecting a paycheck which i mean that's in every profession um but that's why i was talking about like the the, the walks going to you know nature and stuff like that because for me i talking to people definitely helps and i think that's a big part of it but i do think at some point, you also have to take care of yourself. You know, you're not always going to have, uh, you know, us to, you know, have a, you know, a shoulder to cry on. You know what I'm saying? This and nigga you have to me, take yo, I step. fucking said that shit. 
<laughs> Didn't That's I say shit to you over the phone, OC? <laughs> I said some shit like that. Yeah, yeah, I said some shit like that. See, y'all, I influence y'all, man. Let's cool. You me. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. <laughs> you know how I do, man. I'm big time now. No, it's not. Uh, no, but I think um, as black men, and I was actually going to ask you about that because I think it is a, a big thing in our community for – you know, not being outspoken. And I, I remember we was doing a podcast for my uh, Dimitri when we was talking mm-hmm. about Will Smith and right. we seen how he getting dragged through the mud, you know, the memes of him crying and, you know, breaking down, talking about his kids and his marriage and stuff. People dragging this man, you know what I'm saying? And I think as black men, we definitely get the short end of it. You know, they don't yeah. care about our trauma. They don't care about, you know, us growing up in the hood or the projects or our living situation. They just say, hey, you're black, you know, tough that up, be a man, man up and, and take care of your business. And I think that's doing more harm than good. That's why we have a lot more black people shooting each other, you know, right. fighting each other, you know, in prison, because a lot of them didn't get the opportunity to focus, have an outlet. focus on themselves and grow. Exactly. And I think that's a big part, a big problem in our community. Yeah, so, um, you know, I was saying that I feel like uh, part of the problem, one thing that I've been reflecting on recently is the fact that in this generation, we have not been taught how to properly cope with problems, right? Especially as, 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 as men. I feel like that's a big responsibility for fathers, especially to take on to, to, to probably teach their children, especially men, how to properly deal with problems. Because here's what I noticed in this generation, what happens when people have problems? They run, they escape. They either escape to a bottle, to, to smoking, to um, just of doing anything to avoid actually coping with the problem. Mm-hmm. It's something that I noticed that, that we do as, as a generation. And you know, part of that is why I'll say two things. I feel like, okay, when it comes to the topic of, of therapy, right? You know, I feel like on some level, everyone should experience that, whether they think they need it or not, because at the end of the day, the best thing you could get from it is um, knowing yourself a little bit better, because sometimes it's kind of hard. I mean, if you're sitting there, you're, I mean, you could think about certain stuff, right? But if you, when, when you, like, think about it, when you talk to somebody, sometimes you feel like, oh man, I just, I feel like I have a, weight lifted off my shoulder because you express outwardly yeah. instead of inward and expression, right? So that's why a lot of times you go to a therapist, they don't have to say anything. You could just sit there and unpack and you talk, I, mean, I feel better already. And they're like, all right, yeah. cool. I'll see you next time, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With <And> my money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And that, but, you know, part of it is like that a lot of us are not taught how to probably even cope with problems. So for, for some people, there are certain things they might go to therapy for that before they even do that, a step might be to, to say, well, okay, well, how do I deal with this problem? Because whenever something happens in my life, whenever I'm under stress, whenever I'm under pressure, whenever I feel this, I run away to something, right? It's the, I feel like we, we have a, like a new way of life is escapism. And sometimes we're not aware, we're escaping to some, some people escape to the gym. Some people are scared to things that are more toxic, right? And not deal with shit anyway. Like not deal with anything, yeah. Exactly. So, you know, my whole thing is that I feel like the the first things first is to understand, well, how do we even cope? Because if we don't know how to cope ourselves, even going to a therapist, there are certain times it might not be effective because we already don't know how to cope with ourselves. We're expecting they're just going to come there and say, hey, here's what's wrong with you. You know right, what I mean? right, so right, right. Part of it is, well, let me understand, you know, sometimes they might just say, well, have you thought about this? And if you have done the inner work yourself, you can say, well, you know what? I actually haven't thought about it in that way. Or, you know, I was thinking about this and that, but I didn't think about it like that. But it might say something where if you're not used to doing that inner work, you're like, why are you asking me what I think about? It? I'm trying to tell you what I feel. So, so what I'm going to say, um, so, I, so I, am I really the only one in here that, has been in therapy before, so I guess so. Probably, yeah. Well, no, I mean, I've been, I've been in, I've been in therapy, but nothing crazy. Like, okay, I'm so old. all right, so I'm somebody that from 2016 to pretty much earlier this year, I've been in therapy on and off. So I've had therapists for, you know, four to maybe five months, where I saw them regularly once a week. I have like just innate 
like coping mechanisms that I do or that I that just happen when you know certain things are happening to me. But I feel like why therapy is so important is because a lot of times people, a lot of people go through life and they're carrying a lot of shit that they mm -hmm. don't even know that they're carrying. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times they take it out on other people and they project things on other people, not realizing that they themselves are a problem or they don't want to confront or deal with a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? Because even, even you can go to therapy, but I feel like some people, they go to therapy and then they don't even keep it real with the therapist. Mm -hmm. Because in one way, I, I can say from being in it so long that whatever it is that I took from it or whatever it is that I got from it, had very had less to do with the therapist herself and had more to do with me because i think what i said to you in the car before when we were talking about doing the episode is i say that therapy is really what you make it you know what i'm saying like i a therapist can't really do anything for me like you said like you sit there and then you present what's going on in the inside and a therapist is just an unbiased perspective or someone that professionally has some sort of experience and can give you, you know, insight and information. I'll tell you, because what really, what really kind of made me more comfortable with going to therapy is because basically, so uh, back in 2016, I used to listen to, I used to like watch Tyrese videos and he used to have these videos on Facebook where he would talk about a lot of shit that most Ooh. celebrities don't talk about. Like he would say like, you know, just because, you know, you invite somebody, somebody invites you somewhere, doesn't mean you have to show up. Oh, I remember that. He, yeah, he like, like that, yeah. like, yo, that, like, and I used to listen to that shit all the time, like, or how he would say that, you know, you are in charge of your day, your week, your month, and your year. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, or, or what was one other thing? Or how he said, like, you are a cup and like you, you're like a cup of water and then you are allotted this much energy in a day and then every time you do something so you go to work it's a little water you go here you go there when you have an argument with somebody that's like tipping over the tipping over the whole cup of water and then that changed my perspective like that's why i don't even want to get into it with anybody because i have to go to sleep with myself every night so um but i think i would recommend everybody will see but there's here's the thing because there's trash therapists and they're good therapists but i would recommend people going to therapy being open because you can't go to therapy and be closed off. Like I'll tell you, like I used to talk about, you know, certain things and I was, I was real about the mistakes that I made. I can't sit there and then paint myself to be the perfect guy because if that was mm -hmm. the case and everybody was just sitting there doing me wrong, then why do I really need to go to therapy? Mm -hmm. If you know what I'm saying? Like I never made a mistake and I was always the good guy in every situation. Nah, like I, I went there completely transparent. Like, yo, this is what happened. This is exactly what happened. This is exactly what was said. And this is how, you know, all of that made me feel as a result of what was said and done or not done. You know what I'm saying? I think there are people that I can think of right now that probably would never step foot into therapy, not because, you know, going to therapy or seeing some or talking to somebody is the hard part, but being real is the hard part. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause, cause it's not, it's not easy to say like, you know what? I was the one that fucked up our relationship. I was the reason that, you know, I, I did this or that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that, people confronting their like inner demons and, and things, you know, saying that they don't want to talk about. I think that's what scares people. That's what puts people off because I know a lot of black people that wouldn't do that shit because they don't think they have a problem. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it's, it's normal to just, you know, like put a piece of tape over it and then just never talk about it. There's some things that happened to people 20 years ago that like fucked them up and they never talked about that shit. Why do you think Will Smith is just now talking about this? Cause he never really talked about it. That man is, is, is 52 in therapy. And I bet you he, th there's a lot of 50 something year olds and people in that age bracket, people in our age bracket that can use from that. Like it really, honestly, for me, it really started in high school because I used to sit and I, I had like basically just not the best home life, you know, saying it was trash, you know, saying, OC, you know, saying, you know, and, and, you know, when I was sit and I'm supposed to be talking to the guidance counselor about which classes I want to take for the semester whatever it is that was just going on on the inside, it just started to come out. So that was my first experience talking to a complete stranger about what was really going on. You know what I'm saying? And I just believe that. And, and mind you, I mean, also you can kind of speak to that where, you know, it's uncomfortable for people to want to talk about these things because a lot of times like spoken reasons, he says this shit. And I feel like it's true. It's like a double edged sword. It's true. But at the same time, it's not true. What he always used to say is, you know, 90, 99% of all people don't give a damn about your problems are probably glad you got them. Like he used to say that a lot. 
And in some cases, it's true. You know what I'm saying? But let's say like OC, and I'll let you, I'll let you explain in a minute. I'll just kind of, you know, give some context. So OC was just having a little bit of a hard time. And then when he, when I asked him, I was like, yo, you good, bro? Like, like, are you all right? And then, you know, when he finally told me, I was like, yo, like, why didn't you tell me this stuff? And then, you know, you, 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 you tend to think that like everybody got their own problems. So why would they give a fuck about mine? So, you know, OC, I'll let you kind of talk about that a little bit if you want. No, word, no, that's a fact, yo. Like, honestly, um, you know, that's that's an issue that I have. Like, I don't like to bother people with things I got going on in my day-to-day. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just like, yo, you know what? I'm just going to figure it out. I'm just going to see, you know what I mean? Because, like, for the most part, I have an idea of, like, what to do. But it's not always easy to execute. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you be on that road, on that roadmap, and then, yo, something just sets you off, yo, and then it's like, you know what I mean? Back to square one or whatever. Like, it'd be tough, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, knowing, like, you know, what DJ has been through and stuff like that, you know, there's just certain things that that he's been through that I haven't been through. There's certain things that <clears throat> that I've been through that he hasn't been through, you know what I'm saying? In that circumstance, I'm just like, yo, you know what? I know his history and all that. Yo, let me not, let me not bother, homie, you know what I'm saying? But it's wild because he should have been the first one that, that I spoke to. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. like, you know, he understand, he understood where I was coming from in that point, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and I'll, I'll bring it back to therapy. You know, when it comes to like looking for a therapist, you got to find somebody that's comfortable with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember I was, you know, I was telling, I was telling you DJ, um, this episode of like, this is us. Um, you know, I forgot, I forgot his name, but like, um, if anybody watches, this is us, not me, you could just comment and be like yo this is homie yeah. but uh, you know um the black guy was like the, the tri- these triplets and they all grew, grew up not me but he was adopted um he's the only black guy in the family he realized that he had to see you know seek therapy the therapist that he was with not to you know not saying that race should be a factor it doesn't always need to be a factor but he felt that in that moment he was surrounded by white people his whole life he needed to connect with somebody that you know, understood him being a black man. And, you know, the, the therapist he was talking to, there were just certain things and topics that he felt naturally he didn't want to bring up or talk about because she was a white woman. Right. You know what I mean? So he's like, yo, let me, you know, and he, and he told that to her, he said, yo, like nothing against you. It's just, I need to find another therapist because there's certain things I'm not able to talk to you about or I don't feel comfortable talking to you about. And she was just like, yo, it's fine. Like, you know, at the end of the day, like your health is important just want to make sure that you're good and stuff like that and that's it so he did what he had to do so it's like finding the right therapist that matches you it could be you know the same race as you not the same race as you somebody that hears you whatever like just somebody you can connect with somebody that just understands you know what i'm saying because that yeah. makes a big difference yo like and you know with therapy like yo it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you it doesn't mean that you have a problem it doesn't mean that you're trying to solve any problems you just want to be in a position where you can better understand yourself and if there's somebody on the opposite end that can help you with that that's professionally trained to do that you know take take advantage of it you know what i mean yeah. take advantage of it and at the end of the day like and what you like like you, you were saying percy because like me too like i'm not going to recommend therapy on everybody you know what i'm saying like i'm not going to be like like oh what you, you got to go to therapy like no nah. like, like i do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, you gotta go like, like a salesman <laughs> Jehovah Witness, go to therapy. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, showing up your door like, yo, you went to therapy yet? Like, nah. Like, <laughs> that, that's going to be Dimitri. <laughs> hey, if you'll make hey. it to acting. <laughs> hey, but, hey, oh, hey, but, the, but the thing, just, it, you know why? Because I think it's it's not necessarily, I, I just know that it doesn't, why well, it does cost money. But I will say that, like, I mean, you know what's funny? I, I would say that what I feel like costs me nothing can cost somebody everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's why you're right. Like, you can't, oh, you could kind of like suggest it, but I can't, I couldn't say that everybody, you know, should go to, you know, should be in therapy because again, it takes a certain type of openness that some people just don't yeah, have. You gotta, you gotta but like, like I said, so let's say, you know, and I, I, I guess I can kind of segue um, into it where I feel like in our case scenario, you know, like I told you, I said, yeah, you know, most people might not give a fuck about your problems, but I said, I'm actually your friend. Like I care, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's not going to be a time where you're like, yo, bro, like, you know, like he, like, like you're going to tell me some shit. I'd be like, oh damn, that's wild. And then like, 
like most motherfuckers say, you know, saying our 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 era, like, because people, it's like most people they want to know like how you're doing, but they don't really want to know how you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I'm like, like, yo, in, in in times like that, you know, in moments like that, like say like you know, like yo, know, thank God that you that you my that you my friend that you my brother that you actually care. You know what I'm saying? Um, in situations where say like, you know, people don't really like care, you know, or want to understand or want to listen to you or whatever. In those times, they might give you advice where it's just like, yo, it's just not conduce- conducive to your situation. It don't help you no type of way. Yeah. So it's like, yo, like, if you're not really trying to, like, always trying to, like, talk to people, or, you know, like, if you're just in a, if you're in a space where, like, you love to talk to people, but you, those people don't always have the, the time for you, or might not give you the right advice, give you the right understanding, or if you're a person where you don't necessarily want to bother people with your problems, which is not always good, but, you know, I understand. But if you either of those two people, you should go find a person that will get paid. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and is trained like, to listen to, you know what I'm saying? That'll, that'll, and, you know, with that, like, take those coping mechanisms that they teach you mm-hmm. and use it in your own spare time. You know I what was, I mean? Like, I, w- I will say that what's funny, they didn't teach me coping mechanisms at all. I, I feel like what they what they all taught me because i'll tell you first first my first experience with like a professional therapist was trash like this this guy was literally just like like what kirby said like just sit there talk to me and then be like all right so when's the next check like when's the next time you coming in and then like when we finally would kind of strike oil or kind of get you know warmer is when like the session went in and i'll walk out like yo like what, what did i you know what i'm saying like what just happened like i didn't i got nothing from this but the women that i started seeing after because the first one was a guy never again all the women after the fact, they taught me, especially the first one, because the first one was the one that I really saw for a long time. She taught me how to ask myself the right questions type shit. Because I, I tell y'all, like, it was so bad. And I think, OC, you know the story. I think, Percy, I might have told you this shit. And maybe Kirby, too. There was a time where she was like, like, what? She was like, okay, so I'm going to write your name in the middle of, of the piece of paper write good things to say about yourself she was like you know like give yourself compliments like you know you know what i'm saying and then the first time we went through that i had nothing good to say about myself i think i probably said like two things like literally she was like you know what i'm saying two things like and i still have the second paper to this day like that's just how bad it was so and then over time so like the last our last session she did the same thing i had i filled up the whole paper like I filled up the whole entire paper, but what they taught me was not coping mechanisms, but how to ask myself the right questions, which could be anything. Because even now it's like, like I'm, I'm not in therapy right now, but you know, I know how to, you know, ask myself the right questions. So some shit happens. I know how to kind of like pick it apart and yeah, then but, do the exam. That in itself it. is like, a coping mechanism. That in itself is a, I, you know, like, funny, like, I, I know, you know, I know my coping mechanism, coping mechanisms, Coping mechanisms actually are, I wouldn't consider that one of them. That is just an approach I would consider. Okay. Like, it's just how, like, it's analytical. Like, I could really kind of break down a situation into each particular piece and then kind of like, it, it, it's weird. But like, my coping mechanisms are actually like some, like things that I was just doing my whole entire life that still work for me. Because like, I'm unlike other people. I say one of my coping mechanisms is picking up the phone, like, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because that's something that I always, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just like that. Like, if I feel like, yo, I'm going through some shit and I feel like Kirby is the right person to talk to or he can, you know, shine a light on, like, my darkness, I'm going to call Kirby. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm going <laughs> to get a hold of him if I can. If I can't, for whatever reason, I'll move down the list. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, see, how many times, and you know, like, how many times have I tied up your line or came through to your house anytime some shit was happening? Anytime some shit was happening, I've always, I've walked to this guy's house when shit was going off, Percy, like, and I'll say, like, anytime I was really going through shit, like, if I didn't call Percy, I don't even know where I would be at right now for certain situations, and, like, Percy, you know that, you know what I'm saying, so that's why I was I, close like, to blocking your ass, though. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 be, I, be, I, be, I be tying up his line, you know what I'm saying, but sometimes you might, you know what I'm saying, have to do that, because if you don't, it's like, yo, a certain situation might not go the best because you didn't ask for guidance, because that's all so, it really is, it's like, but, you, but, you're, but check, you're guiding somebody this, in a better direction. But check this, though, like, it doesn't always need to be, like, you know, that deep or that big or, like, to that point where it's, like, dang, like, I'm really in need, so I have to, like, find something really quick to, like, it could just be, like, something, like, say, for, for example, like, um, you know, like, if I'm, if I'm stressed or I might feel overwhelmed or something like that. I know for me, 
tackling things one thing at a time helps me. You know what I mean? It gives me peace. Like, it gives me, like, kind of just stability mentally where I could just kind of just chill out and be like, all right, like, and just, like, like ov- the overall day, yo, not looking at, like, huge successes, but be like, all right, yo, I did laundry today. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 I did that, yo. Because you know that, what I'm saying? I banged that out. Like, yeah. yo, like, I, 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 paid, I paid a bill, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I tackled this bill. Or, like, yo, if I knew I couldn't pay the whole thing, yo, let me see if I, I can make a payment plan. A yeah, you know what I mean? Like, let me make this payment plan or something like that with them. Mm-hmm. I tackle things like that. Like, yo, just breaking it down, doing it one thing at a time. And not looking at like as like this huge thing, like certain stuff like that. Like for me, I see stuff like that as coping mechanisms because it's like it kind of just takes you. Like sometimes you just be in it and you feel like you just surrounded in this cloud, like you feel like overwhelmed. You know what I'm saying? It just allows you to kind of take a step back and just calm down for a little bit and just be like, "All right, yo, mm-hmm. how can I better look at this situation?" You know what yeah. I'm saying? Curb, and curb, like, you, you know, curb, you yeah. gonna say something? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. Um to further add on to that you know that this kind of goes back to, to what i was saying a lot of things that you just said dimitri and what you were saying oc um where i was saying that it, it kind of goes back to it does go back to um the, the source it's like understanding how to deal with the source where i feel like a, a lot of us have were never properly taught and i'm not talking about what we're taught through social media or like general media or what we're taught through societal ways. We were never actually taught because we're individuals. Would you tell somebody works for some, you know what I mean? Like most people, they grow up and they see people go to therapy when they have problems. So they think if I have something, I have to immediately go to therapy. But part of it, what I was saying is if you don't know how to deal with certain things yourself, it doesn't matter what answer you're going to get. It doesn't matter what person you can go to therapy and it does not help you you can call a friend and it does not help you because if your bucket has a hole it doesn't matter how much water you put in it it's always going to it's always going to drain Mm -hmm. so you have to understand how to patch the hole when your bucket has a hole so Mm -hmm. part of it is understanding well okay um even if i do receive advice because you know a lot of times like i have a friend they always call me when they have problems and i feel like i give pretty good advice. And I'm not just saying that because it's what I think is just something I've been told. So I I feel like this time I've given them solid advice to the point I'm like, man, why I can't give myself advice like that when I need myself? It'd be like that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I've really poured a lot um, into him, but I find that a lot of times it's like, he'll be, oh, oh man, yeah, okay, okay, that's great. And he doesn't apply any of it or he'll just come back and say this and that. I'm like, well, did you try what I said? Well, I mean, not really. Um, but the thing is, it's, it goes back to the same thing. If your bucket already has a hole in it, it doesn't matter how much water I put into it. The water is just going to seep right out. It's so he doesn't know how to patch that hole. When you patch the hole, when you know how to patch the hole, then somebody pours a little bit of water and somebody else pours a little bit of water. Eventually, your bucket will be filled. So part right. of it, I think it really does start with that. We we never were actually taught how to properly deal with things. And like, I think earlier in a conversation, Dimitri had said what, you know, like what works for a general mass of people is not going to work for the individual. It's the same way school systems, when it comes to the school system and the education system, the way one person learned doesn't work for everybody else. Because if you're trying to teach a fish how to climb a tree and you judge it by that, the fish is going to think I'm, I'm stupid. I don't know how to climb a tree. But a monkey will say, I'm the smartest one in this school. Nice. You know, so it's the same way if you try to, you know, if if most people get their idea of how to cope um, from society, it's generally, they're gonna, yeah, they're going to try that and it's just not going to work. And then they're always going to keep seeking something else and something else, you Ooh. know, for, for I like where you went with that. Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. you know, like you said, OC, when you when something when, when you're in that position, sometimes what helps is you, t- you take things one at a time right so with that you, you it's like if you have let's say you you come under some major major overwhelming problems and you're like you know i'm gonna try it. i'm gonna take things one at a time and even you're doing that so it's, it's helping but the thing is still overwhelming so you seek outside help now whatever they pour into you right they could tell you whatever advice whatever they pour into you you know and you're in your you know in yourself you already have a basis you have a foundation so you're going to take everything they told you and you're going to do it one at a time right so that's part of why it's important to also know well i know that for me 
this is something that works, but it, you can't, but it's like, you can't just be like, well, this is something that, that works because it's what you've always done. You have to really find out, well, number one, am I being projective or reflective? Because a lot of times when we have problems, what we do is we, we project it, we put it on somebody else, but we're never reflective. We never think, well, you know, a lot of times we'll, we'll be like, well, this person did this to me, so now I feel this way. But we never and think, well, people, I allowed them to. Most speak most to people, me. most people are not, most people are not introspective enough. You know what I'm saying? And then like, yeah. like you said, or like I was saying earlier, it's like if they figure out that like, or if the conclusion they come, that they come to in their minds is not what they want, then they'll just kind of just put it away. What I was also going to say, I like what you said about, um, you know, like if there's a hole in it, it doesn't matter what somebody else pours in there. It's always going to come out. And I look at it like, you know, I mean, for me, this is just like my way of thinking, but it's almost like if I tell somebody some shit and like I give them advice or whatever, and then they don't like implement it or it kind of just goes through one ear out the other based on their actions thereafter. Usually I just look at it like they're just too young to decipher. Like they just haven't had enough experience yet to really figure it out because yeah. how many times, how many times have me and OC had no, conversations sure. about like women or some shit. We're primarily like women. And then like he, he, he said something to me that I never forgot. And he said this to me in 2015. You might remember when we were doing that photo shoot when I started doing my little photography thing and we were, we were, you know, saying in town. And then I think we were done or we were just getting there some shit. But I remember he said, I, he was like, I don't want you to be like, like 27 and then still complaining about like the same girl or something like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like still talking about the same shit. Like, I, I remember he said that people told me, people used to tell me a lot of shit and I had a hole in my bucket, you know what I'm saying? And I was just too young to realize it because it's like, yeah, they're pouring it in, but it was just, and just going right out, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like the reason why people haven't can't really perceive what Kirby was talking about is because people don't spend enough time alone in a certain kind of alone. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'll kind of get into it because I wanted to talk about it. I spent a very long, all right. So, so I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. Like, like I had friends like in school, but these were like school relationships. So you know how you have like a class, you in class, and you got like that one best friend that you kind of rock with, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't have like a friend like OC until I was like what 16, 17 years old or some shit like that. No, not even like uh, that was that was two thousand I met you in two thousand nine. So we were I was sixteen. So I was fifteen turning sixteen that year, I think. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. So and he was like a friend that like it wasn't just like, oh, like when we're at school, we friends, but like when we're not at school, then you know what I'm saying? And especially like me, every year I had a new best friend. Like I didn't have like the same friend, you know what I'm saying, consistently. You know what I'm saying? So fourth grade, I had one best friend. Fifth grade, I had another best friend. Sixth grade, you know what I'm saying? So on. I never had like that TV best friend that like, yo, like we're just friends, period. Like we're friends in school, we're friends outside of school, we're friends throughout life. So when I finally got a friend like OC, when I when I finally got other friends, I started to lean on them a lot so so using kirby's analogy i had a lot of holes in my bucket like i had a fuck ton of holes in my bucket and i didn't realize that shit until they weren't around and i it took me a long time to realize that that being alone and figuring out that i had those gaps within myself because i used to use oc to fill certain gaps I used to use my ex to fill certain gaps, you know what I'm saying? And, and because of that, I wasn't able to deal with a lot of problems when they weren't there. That's one of the reasons why like, that was like my main, you know, coping mechanism, so to speak, was to, you know, send this nigga screenshots of what my girl said, or, you know, to pull up to his house and to talk his ears off and then just, just talk about it, but then never actually, you know, send address the shit. And finally I had to realize that shit you know what I'm saying? Over time that like being alone and being able to find out that I had those gaps, those, you know, like cracks within myself and I was able to fill them on my own. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. You know what that and makes you real quick. I'm gonna let you say that. I <laughs> I just thought about this, but when, when you have those holes in that you, you're not really um, I'm patching them up. I feel like what that leads to is being toxic. And that's why I feel like a lot you, of people. Are oh, so, so, so you're calling me toxic. <laughs> 
<laughs> a little bit. Well, you know what? If the shoe fits, if you feel like it, <laughs> I I think it fits. No. <laughs> well, I I will say I will say I will say that um you know I think we've all been toxic at at some point. You oh know, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, whether, whether... I, I was gonna say the reason I say that is because what happens when you have a hole in your bucket and somebody pours into it and it, it leaves? What you're gonna do now is you're gonna keep you know going to try to seek more so that you can fill it in more but what you're not doing is filling somebody else's bucket because your bucket's always empty so you know i always think of a toxic uh a person or like like i think about what makes a person toxic i mean there's 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 levels to toxicity it's there's levels especially when it comes to with women but what what i think about <laughs> what i think about is this is, is somebody who's never pouring into but is always taking from you know like you ever think about a, a, a like a, a friendship where um, you feel like it's one-sided, where it's just like, oh man, I is they all, you know, they always want something for me, but I, I never even get anything f- fulfillment or anything like that. So that that's kind of like, you know, one of the things that I look at it. But um, Percy, you were gonna say something, so I'm gonna let you go. On oh yeah, that. you know, you mentioned the hole in the bucket and a lot of things Dimitri said, and uh, of course OC, which has always true. And you know, going back to originally, we've talked about this plenty of times. The Jubilee video. One of the reasons why I talk about it a lot is not because of the cloud or how many people reposted it is because of how many messages and how many people I've reached by, you know, being vulnerable. And it's something I didn't think about when I was sharing my story. I was healing myself because there's a lot of things. People don't know me. People only see what they see on the camera. And that's for a lot of people. They only see, you know, what you post that people don't know me. They just see me as the most charismatic man in entertainment, rightfully mm-hmm. so. But um, a lot of people don't know my backstory. They don't know a lot of the things I went through. And mm-hmm. so, you know, to this day, I still get a lot of people hit me up like, you know, man, I appreciate what you said, because that was something I always struggled with. And that was my that was the hole in their bucket. It's like you use people to fill fulfill certain things, but you're never really feeling uh, fully healing until you solve that issue. And for a lot of people, the reason why you know, that video was so so powerful for them was because they finally found that missing piece. They was able to find that thing that kept a wall, you know, on them that they couldn't escape. And I think a lot of people go through a phase where they don't know who they are. There's a lot of people in their 30s, 40s, 50s still trying to figure out who still they are as a person. Themselves out. Yep. And right. And we're a bunch of 20 year olds still trying to figure out life out. So I think it's important um, when we talk about mental health and therapy, it's not about the cheeseburgers you eat or how many friends you got or how many f- followers you have. It's about finding who you are as a person. And until you find who you are as a person, you know, it's always going to be hard to fulfill, you know, your purpose or really um, have a strong mental game because you're never going to know who you are, what you need in life, what you're seeking in life. If all you're doing is just, you know, leashing on to different people and yeah. then you realize when the time runs out, you know, there's nothing to show for it and you still back to square one. That's so really I cool. think what I said was was definitely important. No, nah, that's a fact. I was going to just to just to kind of wrap up on that. It's just I just had no choice but to like deal with shit myself. You know what I'm saying? Because I because it, it, I it, and the thing was I had, you know, resentments. So it's like I didn't want to pick up the phone anymore. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, yo, all right. If, if this is a solitude that I got to deal with, then I'm just going to deal with it. The only person that really, really knew what I was going through was Percy. And he lives in L.A., you know what I'm saying? So it's not like I could just pull up to his house. Like, I would talk to him. But we're not on the phone 24-7. We would just be on the phone for the amount of time that we were on the phone for. But then I would just be by myself all the time. And then that's how I was able to pretty much not be as, you know, I don't want to say toxic. The person who could probably really answer that question Oh, so you just say that I'm toxic, bro? <laughs> That's a yes, no. It's not. <laughs> hot seat, yo, hot seat. No, nah, I answer your question. <laughs> yo, no. Nah, because I, I, I have my own definition of, of toxic because I never really looked at it as like, because I'm like, hey, he's my friend. I'm going through some shit. I tell him. So I, yeah, yeah let me know. Yeah, no, nah, I will say, um, oh, yeah. no, nah, because like in those times where like we would link up and we would chop it up, like, yo, like, a lot of times, yeah, we spend like mad time like laughing with each other, you know, having a good time and stuff like that. But there was also moments where it's like, you know, we'd be talking, we'd be talking about the same things, yo. And I'd be sitting there, I'd be like, 
damn, yo, he just not like it's not Too like young, young to decipher. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, so it's just like you know, but I knew like for me, yeah, like well, like is it traits of like toxicity? Yeah, we all have our traits of toxicity. Like you know, some of the stories that I've told you, like you know what I'm saying, like yeah. Like, yeah, I'm not Mr. Clean. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no, you James I mean, Harden, that's why. No. Well, yeah. <laughs> now, yo, if you grow out the beard, Percy, yo, I'm telling you, yo, James Harden, like, yo, spot on, bro. Grow it out, yo, I'm telling you. <laughs> I get a little yachty. I don't know about James Harden. I, I was going to say that, that but I was like, that. nah. Yeah. Chadwick Boseman, Lil Yachty, Eddie Murphy. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Word. <laughs> No, nah, but um, but yeah, yo, like, nah, I mean, in those times, <laughs> yeah, in those times, yo, like, um, you know, if I had stuff going on for myself, like, it would be draining for me. This man is um, still yeah. dying. He's still dying, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I don't know, y'all feel like it's more like Martin Lawrence, yo. I can see, it. I can see a Martin. Yeah, Martin. It's your job, Tommy. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> the thing is, he don't look like Eddie Murphy. So I, I, I that's just I don't know. I, don't I was know, just like, yeah. But anyway, um, but you, what you, you know what? You know, I'm we laughing and joking, but you know what? I think a conversation like this is kind of like therapy for me because when I came, when we started talking, I didn't know what to expect, and then as we talk and I'm hearing everybody's perspective, I think even for me. It's a sort of therapy because you're getting to voice your opinion. Nobody's judging you. And I think that's very important. And I know we was had it, having a little laugh when OC was talking about, you know, uh, maybe taking a dive off, you know, the road. But I think it's important for people to realize that sometimes you need your friends to, you know, hear you out. Maybe not always voice their opinion, but sometimes you need that person to voice your opinion to or express what you're going through because, I talk to so many people, you know, doing my podcast. I talk to many people who go through these, you know, tri- uh, trials and tribulations, you know, that health, mental health game off the wall, you know, they got nobody to talk to and they contemplating suicide. And I think that's very important. Like sometimes you have to at least just be open and have your ears open for someone in need. And even for me, this conversation has been good because we're laughing and joking, but at the same time, we're expressing the things that we've been through, we express in our pain where we're open to being vulnerable and we're enjoying that. And I think that's what a lot of people are missing is friends or people in their circle who can give them that kind of that love and support. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for sure. You know, there, there's, you know, there's, it's crazy because like, you're uh, welcome. you know, oh, my bad. Wait, <laughs> oh, my bad. All right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's crazy because like I was, I was that guy for DJ, you know what I'm saying? But like, for a, very, for a very long time. For a very, for a very long, long time. You know what I mean? And, you know, um, but he couldn't be that guy for me. Now he could be that guy for me. You know what I'm saying? But in the times where, like, I was stressing, like, there was dark times where, like, you know, I would probably, like, convey it to him. It just wouldn't stick. You know what I mean? So he couldn't be that guy for me. <laughs> 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 but now he could be that guy. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's a beautiful thing. He got to get that protein in, you know, he just came from the gym. <laughs> That's funny. You know, he got 30 minutes to eat. <laughs> um, Be right back after this commercial break. Yeah, right. Exactly. 